We're joined now by Mike Siligadze. He is the co-founder and CEO of Top Hat, the which is becoming a giant in educational software. So, Mike, j just remind us what was the problem originally that you guys set out to solve? Uh, hi, great to be here. Uh, so, originally, the the problem that we were trying to solve was student engagement. Uh, you know, based on my experience in undergrad at uh, University of Waterloo. I had many of the same frustrations that students uh, you know, continue to have to this day where I found the lecture environment uh, kind of dull and not particularly interactive or engaging. I found textbooks were uh, expensive and uh, not really aligned mm -hmm. with the way that students want to, uh, want to learn. So obviously universities, schools have had to adapt now to online. Anecdotally, you hear students are having a lot of problems with this. Uh, how can you guys help? That's right. Yeah, uh, I think uh, in many ways what we've seen is the, the changes that, uh, you know, you would have expected to happen over a period of 10 years have now been accelerated and are being compressed into a period of, uh, you know, six to eight uh, months. Um, so it isn't so much that schools are, you know, being expected to do something that they weren't expecting to do. It's just that they're uh, they're having to do it faster. And in particular, that means offering more flexibility, more uh, a more, uh, you know, online delivery of the educational uh, uh, process for uh, for students and Top Hat helps uh, facilitate that by replacing traditional print textbooks with digital interactive learning materials, as well as providing the tools for faculty members, professors to create really engaging active learning experiences, both online or in traditional in class experiences. Have you seen a big increase in business uh, since the lockdowns began? Yeah, for sure. Our content business has been uh, dramatically accelerated. So there's a, a you know understandably a, a huge increase in demand for digital learning uh, materials as everybody is moving online. Where previously there was uh, you know a fair bit of pushback. Uh, uh, you know people were were still trying to hold on to their print uh, uh, learning materials, but now that's uh, that's gone by the the wayside. Now. Obviously, our relationship with our workplace is changing. How will the future of business leadership, um, how will business leadership change? What skills are business leaders going to have to learn in this new environment where a lot of employees may not come into, into the physical head office at all? Hmm. That's a great question. Well, I guess if you ask me, I'm not 100% certain we're moving towards a fully distributed, uh, you know, remote workforce. I think there's going to be more mm -hmm. uh, availability and uh, uh, options for employees to work uh, remotely, but I'm not convinced that it's going to fully switch to that. I think what's happened is people are benefiting from the relationships that they've built uh, in the traditional in-person office environment. Uh, uh, and so that when things transitioned online, there was that rapport and culture that they could uh, rely on. And I think for that reason, many companies have uh, found the transition to remote work more seamless than they otherwise would have. And so the types of uh, you know, work that uh, uh, business leaders are going to have to put in is figuring out how to maintain that culture, those communication, uh, you know, the, the formalizing communication that used to happen more informally around the, the water cooler. What about retaining employees? Do you think people are going to be more mobile, more willing to jump ship to a new employer in this new environment? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, in the same way that uh, there's more talent now available. So Top Hat previously was, uh, you know, an, an in-person uh, culture exclusively. All of our employees were uh, in our office here in, in Toronto. But now we've started hiring uh, remotely. We, we're hiring people all across Canada in the uh, and the U.S. were even looking offshore, uh, and uh, so that that makes it easier for us, uh, and, and in some ways more cost effective to attract talent. But the flip side of that is, as as you say, as you allude to, uh, it also makes it easier for employees to to leave, which is the you know creates a challenge. What about just going back to to education? I, I I have heard that universities, as you said, were planning to move in this direction over the next few years, but they have had an unpleasant surprise that students are going to have are having a tough time adapting to this, staying motivated and focused. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's almost an inevitable consequence of the, the environment where even schools that had an on campus uh, 
experience, which most schools did, they had some portion of an on-campus experience. Uh, the result was that uh, uh, you know that students were essentially on lockdown in their in their dorms. You know, if they uh, uh, you know if they could do anything at all, uh, and so that created a pretty negative experience. Many students chose to sit this uh, this year out. Uh, but what we see schools doing, uh, you know, leveraging tools like TopAd, is trying to create an online experience that is more reminiscent and tries to ben- create the, some of the same benefits of an in-person uh, experience. And that's why you know technology uh, is going to be so critical to navigating this uh, this challenge for institutions. Mike, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Great, thank you. Uh, Mike Siligadze, uh, he's co-founder and CEO at Top Hat, the producer of educational software helping to keep students actually engaged uh, with the university or school they're enrolled.